TGA requires cardiac surgery in the first week or two of life in the form of an arterial switch operation. This is a complex surgical operation where the aorta and pulmonary arteries are incised above the semilunar valves and switched to the anatomically correct positions. The coronary arteries are reimplanted into the aorta, now known as the neoaorta, and the branch pulmonary arteries are brought in front of the aorta during the part of the surgery known as the Lecompte manoeuvre. Any associated cardiac defects, such as an atrial or ventricular septal defect, are repaired at the same time. The pre-surgical workup for TGA involves carefully assessing all aspects of anatomy. However, there are some specific anatomical details that a surgeon wants to know prior to performing an arterial switch operation. Firstly, assess the size and position of the great arteries. To do this, we'll use the peristernal long axis view. Here's an example on the left, with the aorta seen here and the pulmonary artery here. Measure the size of the aortic valve and pulmonary valve in systole with the valves open, as seen in the still image on the right, and comment on any size discrepancy between the outflow tracks. Next, in the parasternal short axis view, take note of the position of the aorta in relation to the pulmonary artery. Recall that in TGA, the aorta is most commonly positioned anterior and rightward to the pulmonary artery, although any position of the great arteries may be seen. It's important for the surgeon to be aware of the position of the great vessels prior to surgery. The parasternal short axis view is used to profile the aortic and pulmonary valve leaflets. Both the aortic, AV, and pulmonary valves, PV, seen here on the right imaging, are often normal with thin and mobile leaflets. The leaflets themselves should be in alignment. In other words, the valve commissures between the cusps should line up in the short axis plane as shown by the blue line on the left. If the commissures do not line up as shown by the blue lines on the left here, this is termed commissural malalignment. This may pose a greater challenge for the surgeon to reimplant the coronary arteries. This short axis imaging shows mild malalignment of the aortic and pulmonary valve commissures, but when scanning, you may find it helpful to slow down the image to view the commissures in better detail. Next, the size of the branch pulmonary arteries are assessed, as they have a potential of becoming stretched or narrowed following the Lecompte procedure. Here you can see the pulmonary artery and the right and left branch pulmonary arteries. The right and left pulmonary arteries can be measured in their widest dimension. The branch pulmonary arteries in this example are good size with laminar flow. Flow from the PDA into the pulmonary artery can also be seen in this view. The parasternal short axis view with a slight clockwise rotation of the probe allows for the coronary arteries to be visualized. In this view, it's possible to see the orientation of the left and right coronary arteries. The usual arrangement in TGA is the left coronary artery, or LCA, arises from the left anterior facing coronary sinus and bifurcates to the left anterior descending artery, or LAD, and the left circumflex artery, or LCX. The right coronary artery, or RCA, arises from the right posterior facing coronary sinus and continues to the right. This parasternal short axis image on the left shows the left coronary artery origin arising from the left coronary sinus. It then bifurcates early to give off the left anterior descending LAD and left circumflex LCX arteries. It is usually helpful for coronary imaging to acquire a moving image like this first, followed by a still image as seen on the right, as the coronary arteries can be difficult to appreciate due to motion of the heart. It's also helpful to assess the coronary arteries in different imaging planes, such as subcostal views, to further confirm their origins. This is a subcostal long axis image tilted anteriorly to the aorta and focusing on the left coronary artery. You can see its bifurcation into the left anterior descending and the left circumflex arteries. In this view, the LAD is the most anterior coronary artery. The typical position of the right coronary artery is that it arises from the rightward and posterior coronary cusp. Again, acquire a moving image first, followed by a still image of the right coronary artery to capture forward flow within the vessel. Coronary artery anomalies are relatively common in TGA, and it is of high importance to the surgeon 
to know the anatomy of the coronary arteries to avoid injury or kinking during coronary reimplantation. There are many different variations of abnormal coronary patterns in TGA, and some coronary patterns increase the surgical risk of the operation. The abnormal coronary patterns that carry the higher surgical risk are a single right coronary artery with an intramural left coronary artery, meaning it courses between and within the tissue of the great vessels, or a single left coronary artery with an intramural right coronary artery course. If a balloon atrial septostomy or prostaglandin was required to improve oxygenation, it is very likely there will be a large atrial communication as seen here on the left video and a large patent ductus arteriosus as seen here on the right video. In addition, it's common to see associated lesions with TGA, such as a ventricular septal defect or valve stenosis, or less commonly abnormalities of systemic or pulmonary veins, so a full pre-surgical echo is essential. If additional defects are found, be sure to inform the cardiologist and surgeon, as they will likely be addressed at the time of the complete repair. They may also affect the surgical approach taken. For example, if subpulmonary or pulmonary valve stenosis is present, then an arterial switch operation may not be favoured in order to avoid subaortic or aortic stenosis of the neoaortic valve. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.